Hi, welcome back to the Everything Sparkle Show. We have with us Richard Lake, 9112.0. Look at this. Look at it. I wrote it. <laughs> oh my gosh. And this is very riveting. And it has so many elements of all the things that we have talked about today. We have had a builder, our first guest. Then we had Sherry, our second guest. And we, yeah. so we have 9-11, we have homeless people. We have like everything that we had touched upon. So tell me how it all ties in in this book. Um, okay, I wrote this book. And it's about... Which, where can we buy it, by the way? It's on Amazon. The book is on Amazon. Punch it in Amazon, not Google. Google will get you there, but it's a little long way around. This is a novel about another 9-11. Uh... The premise of my fictional story, and we hope it stays fictional, Sparkle, you know, oh, yeah. is 9-11 uh, itself. Now, there was a government agenda, and then there was the big event we've all heard about, and then there was lying to everybody, and then go to the Mideast for wars for trillions and thousands or hundreds of thousand people dead, of course, um, but very effective. You know, had the agenda, they pulled it off. But what if they did it again? That is the premise of my story. My story deals with a guy who's trying to get medicine to save his wife. The government and Big Pharma are the bad guys in my story. It's just like real life. You'll take it right out of uh, <laughs> right out of the news. You can, you know, yeah, yeah. I just strung yeah. some stuff together, you know. Um, Anyway, and they start doing things to get a, uh, they get a following on the website. The American people are going, yeah, yeah, keep going, you know. It's like a Robin Hood deal then, you know. And, uh, well, I can't tell the whole thing or else no one's going to buy a I book. I wish you could. <laughs> it, it ends up bad for America, but our heroes get away with it. That's all, you know. The premise of my story, well, that was the premise. My story is written to entertain and enlighten. Uh, now, I'm certainly, here we are, take the red pill, Neo. And, uh, <laughs> not that I know everything, of course, all right? Um, but this is, hopefully the reader will come away somewhat enlightened, you know, like, wow. Um, something I made up myself here. It's better to be aware than hide thine head in the sand, for to exist without a care means thee truly dost not understand. And so, when you're a writer, you write these things sparkle. You know. um, propaganda is a very real thing. Uh, I mean, I could go on and on about this many related subjects. Uh, 9-11 was a, the government had a hand in that, okay? More than one government had a hand in that. And again, we've spent trillions, and we've lost many people, and I can see them doing it again. And I wrote a book about it. Go ask me questions. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm running this, out, ask me questions. Is this your first yeah. novel? Yes. And yeah. um, you're working on another one. Right now, right? I am. I'm working on another one, but it's we're gonna keep this one going for a little bit. You don't want to talk about the other one at all? Can we know the topic? Well, the other one might not be so political. It might be more uh, romantic. Oh my gosh, Richard, did you write a romance novel? I'm afraid that's not my uh, <laughs> my interest in romance lies more in the physical world than the uh, the written world, I guess. Um, no, it might be more a little more sci-fi. Still have a medical bend and, and sci-fi and political as well. You can't stay away from politics, you know, Richard. I guess I can't. It's just they say you use the same part of your mind to study politics as sports, and I don't really follow sports. But, you know, Richard, you brought me a gift today. I'm very excited. I brought some gifts for you, Sparkle. Oh my! Mm. Almonds. I like to eat, guys. In case you didn't know, food's the way to my heart. Healthy food for a healthy girl. And caffeine. Everyone also knows that's my we other that that's my vice. Yep. Whatever. <laughs> and then, dun, dun, dun. 
Oh, I can't. I'll begin each day with a grateful heart. I am grateful. I have great guests on this show. Well, everyone can use a candle. You never know when the power goes out. You never know when there's another government. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> you know. I love how you managed to tie this in. Yeah. Um, how long did it take you to write 9-11 2.0? It took me three years because I have a regular job as well. I can't just sit home and write. Um, I joined a writer's group, local writer's group here. Which one? <clears throat> it was called the Fresno Writer's Group. Is this still around? Now they've changed to the Valley Writers Group because it was a political thing went down with the. <laughs> oh gosh, there's politics everywhere. What what happened? What was the politics? It was just one guy, a couple founding members, kind of had a bit of a conflict. Not a, you know just. So they decided to split off. It's you know I mean, whenever whenever it's more than one person, whenever it's, let's say two people, there's at least six things going on. There's what I think about myself, what I think about you, what I think about the situation here and how it right. interacts. And then there's all that repeated with yourself as well. Mm -hmm. Three and three make six. And so <laughs> you can tell I study psychology and such. Um, that's kind of what happened with the writer's group. Well, that's but, sad. but this proves a person can write a book and if you want to and it's beneficial to join a group get feedback of course i also read books about how to write and well what group are you, you know, with now are you with the valley writers group well i've never formally stopped okay. but i don't go as much I'm, tr I'm working on turning this into a into a movie sparkle i know and so and you might be just the uh, <laughs> just the <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I was wondering because I'm back. Um, I don't know if you know a little bit about my background. I grew up, was born and raised in Fresno, but then lived in LA for 15 years. When I moved back to Fresno, I tried to get back with Win Win, which was the biggest writers group that we had, which I was the youngest member of. Back, I was a member back when I was 11 years old. That's when I started writing. I mean, I started getting published at 16. So I was with them. So I tried to look back for them and gone. And then I didn't know any up and coming writers group that replaced them because every year we had an annual conference. I was a, then a judge for local writers at that conference back in 2001 was the last time I was affiliated with that. So I was wondering what um, groups that we had now locally. Well, there is the Valley Writers Group and I believe they're with Meetup, but they've gone back and forth with that as well. I could certainly put you in contact with that, or our listeners. Yeah, I would. I would could like look to do maybe something the for Valley writers. writers Group and maybe on Meetup try that. Uh, I don't have contact information now, but that could be provided to you if you wanted. Nice. Yeah. All right. Um, I brought some other material here. I know. Uh, well, <laughs> no I've one's ever brought kinds, this much stuff to the I've got all kinds of. I could go on and on. Well, this. Let me, if, if you don't mind, I will Go just, on. all right. Just a little, this is wit and wisdom. This is a little, uh, just some quotes. Fiction is a bridge to the truth that the mechanics of journalism can't reach. And now, there's a few of them here, but I just circled a couple of them. And that is uh, from Hunter S. Thompson. Now, you know, now he was a writer. Right. And he, and this, of course, speaks to the notion that you can, many books, stories, you can see it in movies, books, of course. But the writer has an idea or something he wants to get out there, and he can do it through a fictional story, but then there's a lot of truth in there. And relating to my story, Ray Bradbury wrote Fahrenheit 451. That's happening now. They're censoring social media, and, you know, Facebook will pull ads, Google will pull... Right. Okay, that's censorship. That's Fahrenheit 451, burning books. Um, George Orwell. George Orwell would probably be screaming to get out of his coffin now because of the sense or the uh, surveillance we have. We have surveillance yeah. with everything. And his book, 1984, were way yeah, beyond and that. And that was way ahead of its time when you it think about a, it, how a lot of things have happened from that. Yes. Yeah. Um, the, uh, 2001, A Space Odyssey. I and mean, I read that when I was in high school and everyone's seen the movie you know it's a great 
Uh, Love Stanley Kubrick. Stanley Kubrick, of course. And uh, AI was mentioned there with AI and the computer goes crazy, kills people, tries to take over the ship. Uh, well, we've had that now. Now we have AI and we have... They're using algorithms to read facial expressions and all like that, and you're getting a social credit score, which they have in China. That's actually happening. Well, we've all heard of the, your credit score. Well, social credit score. What do you think and you know do about this and that? Right. And that affects you can get jobs where you might be able to live, all kinds of things. And it's of course it's under the under the radar with most people, but it's it's there. Um, this next one. <laughs> this what? is fun, Sparkle. I'm, I'm this is fun. I'm having fun now. So this is I'm good. glad you're having fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, okay, my book deals with, uh, it touches on the Second Amendment about um, gun. We're having a lot of, it's a lot in the news these days about guns and gun restrictions and all like that. Now, I've heard where you know, the Second Amendment is there to keep in place the First Amendment. And the First Amendment, your right to say and to get into a group and, you know, talk and discuss. That's, I think, Jefferson, you know, the foundation of government. You have to have that. Uh, when the government fears the people, that's democracy. When the people fear the government, that's dictatorship. That's tyranny, all right? And now I remember when I was in school, they had... Uh, we had to go under our desk Earthquake for the drills. nuclear, well, yeah, for nuclear, uh, for attack by Russia, all right? Oh, okay. Now, I remember all that, and I think others have been through this. Well, these days with children, um, okay, when a kid thinks a shooter is coming, this is just an article out of a magazine, and so now they're doing the same thing, these duck and, duck and cover uh, exercises for children, which is, okay, we could say maybe this is good and all that, uh, but is that social engineering? Is that, here my suspicious mind kicks in, um, is that programming a, a, a sect of people coming up to be more, oh, we gotta get rid of guns and this and that. I mean, outlawing guns to curb street violence is like making spoons illegal to try to curb obesity. You know, you, it's ridiculous, you know. That's an odd analogy, but it's effective. Um, anyway, so be careful what you see and hear because it could very well be, well, they call it news programming. What's our, you know, the news program. Right. Uh, that's kind of a two-way, you know. Here, I'll, I'll get into one more here. One more here. All right, all right. We got time for one more for you, Richard, right, right. anything. All right. Um, now, this deals with the movie Pearl Harbor. Yeah. Now, you lived in Hollywood. For a while, or Correct. Uh, yes, Los I Angeles, did. yeah, and you have. And that was part of the, the area, the part of the scene, yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, this, and you can find this on Wikipedia. This is right off Wikipedia here. Now, not to get into how much is truth there, who knows? But just, right. um, but a lot of these other references could be looked up as well. Now, the movie Pearl Harbor came out in the spring of 2001. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Before. Before 9/11. 2001 all right and now people in looking at this people say the movie was somewhat thrown together all right in other words now we know Hollywood cheats at times you know like the airplanes were different painted different than the Japanese zeros that did the actual attack um, the boats in the harbor some weren't even in in production at that time right okay uh, they say it was a, a cheesy romance you know, story. Right. You know, two hours crushed. You know, into a three-hour. We're running cinder. out of time, Richard. Come on, make a point. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> so this this cheesy Hollywood production. So they say. Uh, a few months later, the real 9/11 happened, and then they say, "Oh, this is the new Pearl Harbor." Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, was that propaganda from the start? This is the way some of these large entities work. Okay. Uh, Hollywood will make movies that are propagandistic okay. to get an idea in the public mind again to shape your thoughts. And so is my book to shape your thoughts. 
Nice. Yeah. Everybody needs to read Richard's book. It's really good. And everyone needs to donate to Sherry Art, Sherry's Ark. I'm going to donate 100 today so that I can get my free shirt. I encourage you guys to do the same because we're here about on the Everything Sparkle Show. We support veterans. Thank you. Thank you.